Well, thank you so much for joining us, CEO Kevin Thompson and Selma Eli, communications specialist. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for having us. Wonderful to be here today. Our supreme pleasure to have you. Now, CEO, let me start off with you. Thanks. Asking for an overview of SwimCall. Sure. SwimCall is no stranger to the national community. We are a government-owned company. We've been around for 40 years, and we manage the nation's three main landfills at Beaton, Forest Park, and Guanapo. Importantly, uh, SwimCall was formed to deal with indiscriminate open dumping uh, in Trinidad and Tobago, and we have fulfilled that mandate up to a point, but we are anxious about continuing to fulfill our mandate, part of which is developing an engineered landfill at Forest Park that has already started, and we look forward to its completion. And part of it is encouraging through public education, greater participation in sustainable activities that reduce the amount of waste going into the landfill. So that's us from call in the five seconds speech, as we especially say. Thank you so much. And one of the things that we specifically wanted to speak to was the empowering sustainable communities. So Selma, let, let, me, let me ask you to just lay that playing field for us, thanks. Sure, lovely. Uh, Sumco's newest initiative is the Empowering Sustainable Communities Initiative. What it does is bring several organizations together because we have one goal and that is the sustainable development of Trinidad and Tobago. What we have done with this initiative was partner with the different organizations such as the Ministry of Public Utilities, uh, the Forestry Division and Horticulture Division of the Ministry of Agriculture, and a couple other organizations to go into the community, where, as Mr. Thompson said earlier, we're going to talk a lot more about public education. We're not just going to tell you what to do or how to do it, we will show you, we will partner with you, we will talk about recycling because waste generated goes to our landfills for that waste can be redirected and repurposed and recycled for other things. Uh, we believe that empowering the community means that the empowering must come from the community and also from us. So we would listen to what the community needs. We would look at the the areas that they would like addressed. And of course, the specialists from all of these organizations will come together to better serve and to better empower our communities. Sustainability is not just a thought, it's a way of life, which means that we now need to redirect and to rethink how we approach not just waste management, but the conservation of all of our resources. And so that is what the, the ESC or the Empowering Sustainable Communities Initiative is about. Now I'm taking two thoughts from both of you, or thought each. So Kevin, you spoke about the original mandate of Swim Call and what you're working towards and the fact that you've been able to do some things, there are some things you would like to do a little better. And Selma, you spoke about bringing groupings together. And Kevin, I throw this to you now. Is it that you found that the collaboration is important or you can't do everything that you would like to on your own? Because I know sometimes when someone says, okay, well, it's, it's their responsibility. There's less buy-in, there's less of a hand-in-hand -hand approach. Uh, what is the reason for making these overtures, building these partnerships, working together? That's, a, that's an excellent question, DK. I mean, driving this, uh, we recently looked again at our strategic plan or how we are oriented to face the next four or five years and part of what we, we found there was a gap or an opportunity was for greater engagement in the community so we've done the public education we continue to be in schools we continue to engage with groups but we wanted some deeper participation with the community and it's with a clear understanding that swim call with 300 employees has a limited impact in a nation of 1.4 million. So how can we leverage that a little bit more? How can we leverage our resources, leverage our know-how in this space uh, to produce a, a bigger result? And this fantastic idea, the brainchild of our HSC and communications team, is allowing us uh, a platform to 
but community by community, family by family, uh, magnify the effects that we would have. So within Swim Call, there's a large population that's already doing a lot of these things, but here's an opportunity to go into communities and create a space where 300 people at a time, 500 people at a time are joining up to sustainable goals, living in the UN SDG goals, and also, uh, they, they may not know it yet, but participating very powerfully in Vision 2030. And Selma, I want to ask who are some of the people who are seeing this opportunity, who are partnering with you for the, this initiative? So, so far, we are blessed to be supported greatly by the ministries of public utilities and agriculture. We also partner with PAL, Let's Build It, and it's a play on words. What this particular organization does is use pallets, which we would normally discard and repurpose it and make other items out of it. We also partner with Flying Tree International. Flying Tree does not only uh, reforest certain areas, but they also use the resin that comes from our material recovery facility in Silots. What comes out of that plant is resin that is of 99.9% .9 purity. Flying Tree takes that material and they incorporate it in a number of products that they produce, like plant pots and benches. Those benches and plant pots are redistributed into the communities. So when we collect the recyclables from particular communities, it comes back to the community in the form of a bench or a plant pot. If we are being serious about waste management and we understand that waste management is everybody's business, you would understand that if the waste stays in the community, it creates a lot more harm than good. The persons that we are able to partner with did not simply decide that they wanted to do this for this project. This is what they do. They understand their role when it comes to waste management. They understand that it's not just from God. And I believe that they understand the sustainable development goals. And goal 14, sorry, 17, indicates that we need to partner. And we've started here. We are opening the doors to any other organization that would like to partner with us. And we have been in talks with the um, a number of organizations such as Berger and Penta and ANSA. And listen, we have to do this together. There is one Trinidad and Tobago. We need to come together and get it done. Waste management is everyone's business and it affects all of us. So beautifully put. And I love the fact that you said so far, which means as though it seems as though you're still looking for yeah. different partners. Because so that is one. That is coming. So that is, that is one of the things that we will get into when we return from this break. Stay with us. We are speaking with Swim Call. Welcome back. We are speaking with a Swim Call CEO, Kevin Thompson, and the communications specialist, Selma Eli. Now, Kevin, in terms of looking at the fact that this is a community by community basis are you looking at ways that you can build this model out for the on a national policy in that would dictate how swim call treats with its mandate on a national level um that's a, that's an interesting question we we see this model uh, of engaging with the communities as a natural extension to our, our mandate so we are fulfilling our mandate. Uh, we have a public education mandate, a public awareness mandate. So we ought to be engaging with the community. Here we are doing it in a, in a very structured way. We're doing it in a way that we think magnifies the effects by educating not just the, the student that then goes back to the family, but in educating entire communities together. And then, of course, there are synergies that you get from doing this practical kind of project 
rather than teaching the theory in schools and then persons go back and then the implementation is left up to them, their interpretation and how much they, they remember from what was passed on in school. Here we are going into the community. Um, Pal, let's build it as, as uh, Selma talked about, one of our partners donated a grow box to the terrestrial community as part of their partnership with us and the terrestrial community. That grow box will be used to grow um, household vegetables and, and herbs. That is a powerful kind of example of what is possible when you engage with, with the, your partners, when you engage with the communities, and then you are able to show real life examples. And this, this all the, all the, um, the theory tells us this is how you really impact change by giving people live examples of what works allowing them to participate in it. And as you know, DK, everybody likes a winner. Failure is an orphan, but a success has many fathers. <laughs> and one of the things I also appreciate is that the fact that you have, as Selma said, you have people who this is what they do. That also lends another level of credibility to it because we've heard the name Palace Let's Build It on different, uh, on different conversations. I think one of the last ones would have been with Y Farm. And so, in terms of saying taking it forward, so, the, so I can imagine someone hearing it that's coming into their community and they're saying, okay, well, that's the person that I heard, they're doing that with this person. Yeah, man, I want to learn from them because they know what they're doing. So that educational component and educational component, like you said, Kevin, in a practical way, I think is something that is very powerful. And as opposed to just saying, okay, well, this is what you should do, go and do it. Here are the tools actually being shown how to do it. But with that in mind, though, and I'll ask you this, please, Selma. Mm -hmm. The educational aspect of it, how are you building it out? Is it that you have a cap? These are the amount of people that you're engaging with at this point in time. Uh, how, does that, how does that take place? So in person, there is a cap. When I say in person, I would use the second uh, community that we're going to, Beverly Hills and Lavender, as my example. Uh, through our partnership, the community has decided that the police youth group, so the youngsters would be the ones coming to learn. So we will meet in an, an open space because we need to follow COVID guidelines and I will teach. After that, Forestry Division will come with their plants and their seeds. Palettes Build It will come and show these youngsters how to handle the plants. Because let's face it, not everyone has a green thumb. I'm horrible horrible with plants with trees that's something else but we would have different organizations come in and teach or come in and show and teach does not necessarily mean with a pen and piece of paper it means showing them how to do it so we have painters in the community we have builders in the community we have firemen we have people that love agriculture what we need to have is a community that understands we're in this together. If your neighbor's house floods out, it's a very good chance that your house is also flooded. If your neighbor has rats due to improper waste disposal, there's a very good chance that you also have it. But if we come together, we are the solution. We are able to teach each other, learn from each other. You may know something that I don't. You may have a skill that I don't have. And we can build each other. And that's what we talk about. When we, when we say sustainability, remember, it's a way of life. So there are persons in the community who might have agro shops, so they will donate some plant seeds. There are persons who have no seeds, but they know how to paint. They will come out and paint outside as well. But as much as we're talking about the environment, we need to understand that our environment is, is, is everything physical. It's not just flora and fauna. We want to improve those, but we also want to improve everything about our communities because this is where we live. And if we take care of where we live, then we will eventually take care of the cities and our office spaces and our schools. So we're starting small, we're starting within the community. Swim Call is going to come. The public education team is going to come. We are going to teach. Forestry Division is going to be there as well. They're going to provide us with a lot of information and different skills. So too is Palette Build It. And um, 
I understand that Habitat for Humanity is very interested in partnering with us because they understand the importance of bins. So you might get a custom made bin that you can design yourself, you can paint it. So you can put your name on it, you know, and it, it's about pride, it's about coming together as a community, and it's about empowering you to be sustainable. All right, now see you don't feel a leaf in your outer, but as you're talking about coming together as a community, Selma, how do you decide on which community you go to, which is the next community? Because you, you spoke about which one is the second one, which means there would have been a first. So what was the first like, and how do you decide, okay, well, this is our next target area? Well, they asked us first, and that's why they were chosen. So our first community was Trust Trail. We're pleased to say that Trust Trail was the first community to partner with us. And uh, we did that last week, Monday, actually. And Trust Trail was able to plant their trees. They got their grow box that was donated by Pala Let's Build It. They were also provided with seeds. And their public education will come about shortly. Uh, the second uh, community, as I said before, is Beverly Hills in Laventer, after which we will be going to Bones Road, St. James, uh, Diamond Vale, Diggo Martin. We would be going to Oasis Lands in Chibonas and also to the HGC Development in Hoover. My uh, co-worker made it very clear that we come in Faisabad and Tobago, we did not forget you either. We will be in Boku in Charlottesville and in Glenwood. All right, and looking, so, and, and looking at this, and uh -huh. sorry, and see you, we have about two more minutes. So I want to make sure that you, one, you get your closing statement in, and also Swim Call decided to go into getting green about seven years ago. What are some of those changes that you've seen on a national level from then to now, and how do they tie into some of those sustainable development goals? Uh, again, another excellent question. We, in terms of getting into green, we would have, I would say, challenged the national community, not just to get into green as a, as a nice tagline, but we will also challenge the national community to make uh, a resolution, make a no pollution resolution. Uh, you, would, you would have seen DK recently with character Charlie is back. Charlie is ready for the 2020s. He has his mask or not at times, but he's up to his same old tricks. And we, we believe Charlie is a, is a great people to get that conversation started again. But in making those no pollution resolutions and encouraging the national community to get into green, we would have seen an increase in the amount of recycling taking place, which is important for us because as a nation, about seventy percent of what is going into the landfill can be recycled, and currently uh, we are only at about a ten percent of rec recycling rate in terms of uh, reusable uh, empty beverage containers, bottles, water bottles, as a for instance. We can do much better. So we have, again, as I've said said before, we've come some way. We need to go further, and these initiatives that we have are aimed at magnifying the effects of, of the programs that we've already had. We are again challenging the national community to make a no pollution resolution. What is the resolution that, that you can make uh, individually and as we challenge communities, what are the resolutions that they can, they can make to bring us into a more sustainable future? We, we have gotten to a point as a nation and I would say as a planet where we need to take stock of where we are, the things that we're doing, and we need to approach things in a much better way. The climate change panel of the UN is, is incontrovertible in its statement that we have to do something now. And so SwimCall is doing its part. We believe that the national community will work with us. As Selma said, then the number of communities that are jumping at this opportunity to partner with us and to do something sustainable in their community and by extension in the country is amazing. So and we and, and really want to jump and we want to jump in with you and uh, have another conversation at another time. But this is the end of this one, sadly. But thank you so much, Selma, Eli, as well as Kevin Thompson. And we want to thank you for tuning into In Depth with me, DK Rosta, on behalf of the entire news team. Thank you for joining. <laughs>